of things in my life. A lot of things that I'm very, 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 very proud of. I've accomplished above and beyond what the most only dream of being capable of doing. And I uh, saw a video a few minutes ago, and uh, I guess this is the video they wanted. Um, I thought I talked about it in my biography, um, but I might not have. I haven't watched my biography over again. But uh, a long, long, long time ago, um, I was a, a rape victim, and uh, I was harassed for quite a few years. I was wondering why, 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 why. See, some people want a direct line to God. Today I believe I have one. And uh, I don't believe it's because of what happened to me. I, I believe it's because I went to church on my own and because, because I asked the proper questions and I read about all the religions and all that stuff there. And I screwed around with witchcraft a little. Because uh, my brain couldn't understand why this kind of thing could happen to anybody. I'm a man, and uh, I love women, Taylor Swift especially. You've all heard about that lately. And uh, when I was a kid, me and my sister, both of us, we raped and molested. But the whole world thought my daddy had done it. And after I lost my memory when I was five or six, I went back to my home, my mom's house, and I couldn't remember anybody or anything for that matter. And over the years, flashbacks came back. And uh, it drove me nuts. Drove me nuts. It's, it's enough to hear about women getting raped all over the place and, and all that kind of crap. But imagine if you're a guy. And I uh, want to take this chance also to say uh, Merry Christmas, Dad. I know it's not you. <laughs> I was there and I have my whole memory back. Um, it was our neighbor. Our neighbor, and then after the neighbor got away with it, and <laughs> guess what happened? Huh? Neighbor got away with it, so. Somebody else tried, and somebody else tried, and somebody else tried. I was raped over 25 times, and uh, so certain people started certain people started thinking I was gay, and uh, now I kind of understand why they started thinking that. Uh, deep down inside, I feel like I'm a lesbian. I, I love women. <laughs> I wouldn't touch a man. For God's sakes, I can't even hardly wash my own penis because of what happened to me. Over the years, like I said, I finally figured out every single person because the most traumatizing thing for a person is to survive rape or molestation. And uh, that's what drives us to kill. I haven't killed anybody yet. I don't ever think I will. But nonetheless, it's most likely what drives these psychotic people to, to, to take away you know, people in colleges and all that kind of stuff and when they mass murder everybody. <laughs> I'd also like to take this chance, I don't know, they, they, hats off to my sister because uh, she, she grew out of it a lot better than I did. I'm assuming it only happened once to her, I don't know any more than that because me and my family kind of went different directions with everything. My mother didn't believe me when I tried telling her as a child and, and then she tried to make me tougher about it. She tried to, to encourage me to, to, to not think about it. and keep going on, I'm a man, I can handle it, and I didn't have a daddy anymore, he was gone, and the whole world thought that he was, he was, he was the one that did this to us, but the fact that he's not, <sighs> I hate this state of mind, I hate thinking about it. But for fuck's sake, if we don't say anything about it, it's going to keep happening to everybody. Look what just happened in India. Is they being raped by six people at the same time? That happened to me twice. Twice. And these are men. Like men attacking men. Like these, these people need to be in prison forever and medicated above and beyond. 
turned out to be a pretty kick-ass actor and stuff like that. So even my biography is a little hard to believe. Even when I watch it, I'm like, holy jeez. <laughs> But I try communicating with Oprah and a lot of people through my life to try and get this story out because, because it shouldn't happen to anybody. It's not a way to send people to war and it's, it's, it's psychotic, it's, it drives us mental. Um, the reason why it's so hard for me to date a woman and the reason why I go five years without kissing or stuff like that, <laughs> it's not because I'm a bad man or I don't like women, it's, it's because I'm afraid of losing you. I have never, even though I had a mother, I never had a mother, okay? And that's sad. And even though I had a father, I didn't have a father either. So it was me and God my whole life. And that's why I kept my mouth shut my entire life because I was damn afraid. Damn afraid to tell anybody about it. And the minute a friend found out, it wouldn't be my friend anymore. And it was, ugh, gross. You know, we, we get those thoughts too. We, we try our best to move on from it, but we never do, we never do, it, it'll hurt us till we die, and even as an adult, I've never done it back to anybody at all, I've never I can't understand it. See me in my head. I'm a guy. I don't know how you ladies feel when this happens to you, but as m watching my sister grow up, she got real mad and, and, and real aggressive. And as a child, she was really aggressive. Me, I kept my mouth shut and I kept it all in, and kind of tried to use it to make to make more stories and stuff like that. It doesn't really work. <laughs> Best thing to do is to block it out and and move forward. So you don't end up crying like a baby all the time. Yeah. What you crazy people out there have got to stop. You've got to stop. Like if you eat India last week, I can't fish. Why aren't these people being punished? You know, I come back to this little crappy town and, and these pedophiles that, that actually did the crime are, are still there with jobs, making money, I see, <laughs> richer than I am. And I'm like, <laughs> like, I feel so much for that direct connection to God. <laughs> I guess God doesn't pay for telling the truth. Huh? Just opens those gates for us. I don't want to sit here and, and mention all the names of all the people that actually did this to us. Because certain places we still quite don't know who actually did it. But, uh, Nonetheless, it's, that that was the most the most traumatizing thing for me. It was worse than the hits to the head and and, and all these officers jumping on my back and stuff like that. <clears throat> on top of never being guilty of anything, I survived all that. And uh, the only thing I can do is 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 tell people, even though people might start saying, "Oh, you're gay because you go to church," or or this or that, or the best thing to do is, is to go to church. And it doesn't matter which kind of church. It doesn't matter at all. But the biggest strength I found in life was to actually go to church and, and, and just talk to God in your head. It's good enough. It's a start on top of letting people know what happened. I waited, I waited a long time because at first, growing up, I, I had lost my memory and I did not know whom actually had done this. My sister was blaming my daddy and and the world was blaming my daddy and then uh, over time with the psychology work we did um, we figured it out that it wasn't him at all. It was the neighbor and uh, like I said in my biography if you want to know more about that part my, my mother named my baby brother after the real pedophile. But for me it didn't stop there. <laughs> And my sister got lucky, the rest of the family, I guess, I don't know. But since, because that guy got away with it, I ended up getting hurt again with the Big Brothers Association of Canada. And then I ended up getting hurt again with 
with the, the McHugh uh, government departments that uh, tried to medicate me and tried to figure out what was wrong with me. And uh, that's what was wrong with me, is everywhere, everywhere the government took charge and, and everywhere the government put me, um, it would happen again. Um, today I think, okay, maybe it's because you don't want me to kill all the French, <laughs> because we get mad like that. And uh, so, so a few English people tried to do the same. Yeah? And then, well, I'm not going to annihilate a whole generation of people just because one or two creeps are still walking loose. But nonetheless, when you have 35,000 police officers in a small town like this, it, it should, not be <laughs> should not be that hard to reprehend these people, even if they at least do 5, 10 years of prison. Remember, I did 12 years worth of time, and I still have committed no crime. As gay as that might seem, <laughs> I'm Napoleon who needs the biggest hug on the planet right now. <laughs> For you kids out there, if it ever happens to you, and God forbid it does, but if it ever does, don't hold it in. That's the worst thing you can do for yourself. And, and that's, why, that's why we lose a lot of people to, to heroin and, and crack cocaine and that stuff there. We lose a lot, a lot of men and women to those drugs because, because you kept it inside. If you want to win over that, you, you have to keep thanking God and thank Him and thank Him that you're alive for one. Thank Him that you were strong enough to survive it because we survived it. You understand? And we're moving forward. And like today, I'm going to be, and you're going to see, and I am a huge superstar. And, and it's not the fact that this this kind of stuff happened. It's, it's because I went to church. It's because I prayed on my knees a lot. And it's because I asked Him for help. And it's because I didn't stop talking about it till the world knew. And if I, if I had a chance to talk to all 8 billion people on the planet, I would tell them all. I would tell them all, afraid I'm not, as scared I get, if you know what that means, the difference, because there is a difference. Ah, uh, beautiful Taylor Swift likes to uh, encourage me with the internet, it's above and beyond. Fear, the journey to fearless. I get fearless to talk about this stuff. <clears throat> this has become my best friend. Why? Because the same crap happened to my mother when my mother was a child. It's like it's like a vicious circle. So it's because because we we're, we're, we fell in that trap and these people got away with it. I, f I fear every freaking day because I got children myself and and I tried protecting them by scattering them around and and and, and placing them with their mothers in places where where nobody actually kind of does that stuff, but you never know when they do that stuff. I have never became, never became a, a real like sex freak or stuff like that. I do have moments where, where I look for a hug. Holy jeez, <laughs> that's incredible. And then moments where I'm scared shit just to talk about. It. And then, and then lately because I've been talking about everything and the whole truth has come out. And I got this feeling that if I don't talk about it, it's going to happen again and again. I know back back when in the First World War, and, and even for the Second World War, um, when uh, Hitler was killing all of us, um, I knew that that was a war tactic. Some armies on the planet were actually raping men to get men to go to war, because that's, the, that's where we want to go, and don't worry folks. I've been army trained, and I, I'm not capable of going to war. I, I can't even hurt a fly. I can yell a lot because uh, the French had taught me that all the French are quiet in a silent revolution. But but you read his name, Jesus Christ, in English. You read that in French, it's Jesus screams. That's what it means. So so going to church and getting the strength little by little. I became a little like my sister where where I'd be yelling a lot and not in ways where I'm hurting or damaging anybody or myself but uh, in places where I wrote a script and and I yelled about my script in order to to release some of that anger 
that way. Uh, I used to play hockey and, and run. I was the fastest man on the planet. I used to run a 400 meters in 37, 37 seconds. And not because I was good, it's because I was scared. And since I was the scaredest person on the planet, I learned how to run real fast. <laughs> Over time, my entire body was disabled. I broke over 30 bones in my body. Some by accident, some I blame God for. And the rest, you all know who, the authorities that, that really thought I was a bad man or something like that. So by breaking all that, I became disabled. Today, I, I can't. I can't work a normal job and that's why I only do music and movies because I, I, I can no longer like I can probably look for a pizza job <laughs> but nobody's hiring right now and uh, <coughs> seeing seeing a lot of people every day it, it's not possible for me at all um, to put on a show like uh, some of the great ones have managed to do is uh, is something we're working on and stuff that's going to be released in the future but for now for now it's see I do this I do this cross on my head instead of like most people huh? You protect your heart <laughs> my heart's been ripped apart so many times that the uh, this part here doesn't seem to work for me, so I started doing the cross just on, on my head in order to, to avoid me losing my head on all these subjects. Because, uh, as I said, I'm only 36 years old, and uh, <coughs> that could be still a long life ahead of me. And uh, I'm not suicidal. Uh, that's a good thing, I guess. Um, but. Uh, Talking about it is the best way to release it instead of holding it in and waiting till you hear that <laughs> mommy don't believe me. How come you don't believe me? You believe my sister? We were there together. It happened to both of us. Why do you think she's right and I'm wrong? Like it didn't didn't make any sense to me. But over time, over time. I guess it makes sense because parents seem to protect their, their daughters more than they protect their sons. And for God's sakes, I, I, I did the same thing. I protected my daughters and I disowned my son the minute he was born. <laughs> just in case, just in case you freaks do it to them. <laughs> and to me, that's the scariest time. That's the scariest, the scariest state of mind anybody can go through because that would. That would blow a fuse for me. I studied the law. I studied all the laws, the family law, the criminal law, and the civil law. Just to try and find a way to, to put these criminals behind bars. And I still, still haven't, haven't been able to do so. Whether or not these people are going to get reprehended or not, I don't know. That's not my job. My job was to file the police reports, which I did, and and to to hope that they would do the job properly, because we lost a father, a father and an, an entire family, like the, the Pullman family, and because because of this crap, and life would have been so much easier. A lot easier. <laughs> I still find myself thanking God every day. I guess that's what's given me the, the courage and the power to move on. Well, I've been hearing a lot of rumors lately, and uh, I think that's what's spiking all these little interviews. Is uh, oh boy, 
the whole world's got it wrong. <laughs> and you can go to a town where they have a children's aid society page, a fucking Bible book, see, all on me. <laughs> and I'm reading this through prison. And the minute I'm done reading it in prison, I get attacked by the guards. Because <laughs> the guards read it first. And uh, they thought they thought all that stuff was real. Holy jeez. I spent two years in court trying to prove to the judges that that stuff isn't real. <laughs> That's the stuff that isn't real. God, in the business, they got it all wrong. You see, I've never committed a crime. I've never killed anybody. And all these papers, all these papers, you see, it says... Says I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. It's like, no way, <laughs> impossible. See, and that's why I, I found a few other psychi psychiatrists and psychologists to help in going back into the memory because the subconscious records everything from from, from birth till your death. It's it's like a it's like a video camera or a tape recorder, and, and it doesn't miss a beat. Meaning everything that happened to me when I was under hypnosis, they wrote it down. And that's why you got the biography released this year. And that was released in 2012. Because I'm a firm believer that God God punishes. And and that's that's just so so you can enter heaven. Because you know a little white lie, why would a sin like a white lie stop a perfect human from entering heaven? Well God God, God, God punishes that, and in the Catholic world, the, the priests and all that stuff, they have ways, you know, like you read the chaplets and all that stuff, and you recite it and all that stuff, and uh, to me the biggest extent of my crime days was $20.76 and one white lie. I've never, never done anything else aside from that, and this happened as a child. <laughs> now listen to this. This stuff happened to me as a child. It was hard enough growing up knowing that my baby brother <laughs> was named after the, the first original pedophile. And then, and, and I had to keep that in. I didn't want to hurt my brother. It, it, it didn't happen to him. See, it happened to us. He wasn't born yet. Uh, over time, it got a little easier to talk to him, but as soon as we'd opened up to each other, I'd be pulled out of my family and I'd be put in a psychiatric ward and stuff like that. And I'd be given needles and all this shit, Anna Smith, that whole story. And, uh, yes, Anna Smith and that whole story. Today, my older sister is named Anna Smith. They say, like, what's this conservative government trying to do to me? <laughs> uh, well, I'm trying to keep me smoking. And it's my set, huh? and on my set it's allowed. This is the truth, and uh, like I said, happening to a person growing up as a child, you go through all these little psychotic modes that uh, only psychiatrists will be able to help. But if you if you talk about it, you're searching for something. All those that that has happened to Ellen came out saying she was gay. I, I'm not gonna do the same. <laughs> I might tell you I feel like a lesbian because in my eyes. It, it's happened to women all the way through my life and, and I was like the only guy that this happened to so I, I look I, I look, I look uh, another space but I look I look for someone to hold and I'm not the type to 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 look at women from from head to toe I'm the type to to look for for the eyes the little sperm in us you know this little part here so you can eventually connect uh, and we connect like this before we do this, uh, and uh, I guess uh, getting a different kind of job is, is nearly impossible for me because of that stuff there. So all I've got is my Wild SP production company and uh, my directing and my writing. I became good at it, uh, real good at it. A lot of people know me as Stephen King and, uh, and so many other names. but. That's that's where where it all came from. I have another one. I love you. But but the the 
the most, the, the biggest mistake parents do is is not believe their child, and often enough they, they don't believe the child because, and I learned this in psychology 101, and they don't believe the child because it, it's it, it's too harsh for them to understand that the, the the that somebody could could do that to them, and until you lived it, you don't know how we feel. We do have moments where, like I said, we we're scared, and then moments where we get real, real strong and, and real brave. And, and, and women, they, they tend to, to end up having a little animal side. In men, I don't see that happening in me at all. Unless it's scripted, I, I, I can even tell a, a woman how gorgeous she looks face to face because it's, because she might hurt me. <laughs> And, uh, and maybe that's why they, they thought I was gay or something, I don't know. But because these people got away with it, as an adult, it's happened three times in the last few years. And uh, uh, that's the most disgusting part about it all, is, is how can this happen to a male adult? And, and I got no answers for that. I got no answers for that. It, it scares me. I, I barricade my doors at night time. I, I, I barricade my windows and everything. An alarm system won't stop them, and, and in this town, folks, every time I call the police, they arrest me. So, uh, so I can't even call the police because it, it, it's scary. And they got it wrong my whole life, and why would they? They start changing today. This is how I see it, right? You see, a, a guy, I come as crime his whole life. And he's a criminal, as he's labeled like that, and he's like that forever. <coughs> Me, I, I pled guilty to stuff out of fear, not, not, not because I was guilty, because I was scared, because these guys were huge and big and they put all kinds of nonsense in my head and I thought they would win because if, if nobody believed me as a child, why, 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 how, how would I defend myself? And that, that that's been the biggest, the biggest rock for me to break through. Because today I don't, I don't do drugs, I don't use meds, I don't drink. Um, well, once upon a time in college I started drinking, and uh, I had a blast. I drank every day, every day just to forget, to forget. Because you drank and, and you, you don't think about that stuff. You drank and then you, you can look a woman in the eyes and say, hey, you want to dance? <laughs> and today I don't drink at all. Smoke the cigarette. The, eventually, that'll stop. I'm sure. If it doesn't stop here on Earth, it'll stop when it's my time to go to heaven. <coughs> like I said, if we don't talk about it, it'll never stop. It's like, like the the people in India. Those people, I don't know if they should be put to death, but I do know that they should be reprehended for their actions. Um, when, when, when I've spent 12 years doing time for committing no crime, just in case, because some people did know, and today as an adult, I realize that some people did know, and, and well, I just wish they could have helped, I guess they couldn't. Um, we have to move forward and, and keep thanking God, and, and really, really try not to, to bury it and crush it and never think about it again, but to put it in a place in our minds where where it's not going to affect our everyday lives. Me, it, it doesn't as much as it used to before, um, but then again, I can't go outside, run the 400 meter like I used to, and uh, or play hockey because I'm physically disabled from the waist down. And, uh, I still manage to walk, and I'm still capable of driving, and uh, I'm going to pull through all this because I am a survivor, and uh, the reason I think I am a survivor, and I don't know if it's God's doing or, or man-made, but, but it's, it's to help the children of the future. You keep following your Taylor Swift, and, and, and you'll understand when you get your first broken heart that, that there's ways to move forward. And because to me, that's what 
start of my journey, life is love. Not life is sex. Sex don't make babies necessarily, huh? but love does make babies, right? So life is love, and uh, that's why my me as a musician. That's why. That's my journey, right? and that's most likely why you'll understand why I connected with Taylor Swift so easily, and why I still haven't kissed in seven years. It's been seven years since my last kiss and uh, it might be a few more years <laughs> might be a long time it might never be my Taylor Swift <laughs> but in my heart mind and soul uh, this guy is connected to that woman and that will never change especially because my closest friends to me and my closest family to me didn't believe a word I was saying also great victims are never believed and it's not because they don't believe us it's because it's hard for their little brains to to comprehend how this could happen to someone. Even to us, those that did survive it, how how and why? And why did that why did people let that happen? All these rumors that, that like out here especially I don't need massages and, and all that stuff above and beyond. I'm not looking for, for one night stands and dates and stuff like that. I'm really looking for a connection that, that's going to keep me happy. And uh, when you find that connection, you're never supposed to let it go. Because uh, otherwise you do end up very lonely for a very long time. And it's, like I said, very difficult to pull yourself out of it by yourself have to try and get a circle of friends that that do believe you and that will stand up for you and <coughs> and help you carry forward this is my relaxing chair this is where I sit to to the world heal my back a little because uh, my spine has been damaged a lot and uh, it kind of helps and uh, it's like a therapy chair <laughs> and uh, I've been to a lot of therapy so uh, so I know that this this video this video here will be on YouTube and, and I know that this video here might clarify a few things for a lot of people and maybe even help people in the future Talk to as many people as you can when that happens. If your mommy and daddy don't believe you, and your uncles, and then and then it happens again, and then you look for neighbors and friends and your friends' daddies, and then you get scared, see, and then you stop, and you revert, and then that's no good. You have to keep going, keep going, keep going, till you get someone that says, hey, you know what happened to you? I believe you. I'll go help. Because now I know what to do. When it happens to me, oh boy, <laughs> it's a it's a freaky, a freaky time. And but uh, <clears throat> when I see it happen to others, it breaks me to pieces. It breaks me to pieces, and uh, I won't, I won't, I can't say that I can protect and, and avoid it happening to everybody else. But I can't say I know what to do for you, and I know how I can get you help. And I have managed to find the proper lawyers, the proper doctors, and all that kind of stuff. And I can redirect you in a in a direction where where it'll be it'll be beneficial for you. It's not it's not something you should just take lightly. And and you're gonna wonder why you've had three, four, five, six girlfriends and girls, four, five, six, seven, eight boyfriends, and you're like. You're wondering why are you doing something wrong? Is, are they doing something wrong? Why? 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 Well, often enough, it's because of that little bubble in the past that you did not fix, and uh, it doesn't take much to fix it, but it takes time to fix it, and time not in prison, time surrounded by friends and people that do believe you, and when when it's 
Like in my case, my, my case on the planet is the most extreme case ever heard of. It's worse than Jesus. Like, like it's, it's, it's above and beyond. But we've noticed that psychology 101, look at that. We can handle it. We can move forward from it. We can learn from it. We can grow stronger with it. And over time, we'll all be dancing and laughing again. <coughs> there are moments where, where, where I can, right? You've seen some of my movies. You've seen some of my music, right? And I won't stop. There'll be more movies, and there'll be more music, and there'll be more interviews like this. But uh, hats off to all those that talk about it, because uh, that's the first step in, in fixing that bubble. And so uh, thank you for listening to this one, because uh, it takes weight off your chest, makes, you, makes us feel light. <laughs> and so then we revert the children. Now if you stick around with the camera a little bit, the next the next half an hour, you will know, be like a kid. Because that's what happens to us. And you know, we become like a kid. And I always wonder why. And it's because in psychology 101 they teach you to go back to one specific moment in life where everything was perfect in your brain and your eyes and your mind and so where everything around you was going good. And, and with psychology, when you don't have the proper training, I have the proper training, but when you don't have the proper training, you go back to anywhere in the past, and that could be dangerous. Because if you wake up one morning and you're right where you've just been molested or raped, then, then you freak out. You freak out and you might end up doing like what happened in the States and Columbine and Douglas College and all that kind of crap. And, and that's dangerous for the rest of us, and we don't like that. And even me as a victim, it scares me to see when those things happen. And I'm like, okay, they're all dead, they killed themselves, but we could have avoided a kid from killing all those people too. And, and being as smart as I am today, I strive, I strive on helping, not, not on discouraging or, or destroying people. And, uh, provocation is is against the law and uh, it's one of the number one reasons why victims end up hurting people or hurting themselves is because nobody around them wants to help because it's too and stuff like that so <coughs> to avoid to avoid future future major catastrophes it's not by putting guns in your schools that you're going to stop this from happening it's by listening to your children most schools most schools now have an orientation, 15-20 minute orientation in the morning. With the proper teachers in those class, we can figure out who's being hurt and who's not. We can figure out who's covering up the hurt and who's not. We've studied it for years and years and years. And today, it's, it's not my job to, but I'd be the first to offer a hand on anybody that's ever, ever survived or, or been through something like this. The first step for us on this side, when we're not in the victim, victimized mode or the surviving mode, is what can we do to help? And listening is a proper way. If a parent can't listen, a parent should not be a parent. Aside from all that, <laughs> there won't be any dancing today, but if you wondered why I was alone a lot and why I keep myself alone a lot, that's the number one reason right there, because uh, it's, it's very difficult. Even a uh, 36-year-old male like me, I try to find a girlfriend now. Haha, <laughs> I'm out of luck, huh? I'm out of luck. And if I have to walk it alone forever, I'll walk it alone forever. It's no big deal, but the big deal was was to get to start talking about this so we can start helping the others and start start helping those that are afraid because there are a lot of people that never never suffered anything at all. A lot of people on the planet, half the population on the planet, have had a perfect little life, and those are usually the people that that do nothing about it and don't care. Those are usually the people that turn their backs 
on, on people that have survived something like that. And uh, I'm in the hopes that my biography and this interview here can slowly really start changing the planet on their ways and their views because uh, it's not something that I want to talk about every day but uh, they say uh, every 20 minutes someone gets raped or molested in this interview two people have just been raped lack of life on planet Earth so far and the interview is not done I tell you, tell you where my the psychology and the work in psychology and on my brain and stuff ended up going to. We found a perfect spot where where where, where life was perfectly beautiful, and in the darkest moments of my life, I end up hiding myself in a cave, and uh, I'm going to tell the world. But it doesn't hurt your feeling gorgeous. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to tell the world that in that cave, I hallucinated. I hallucinated a face, a face and some eyes in this part here of, of an adult. There was me and a bunch of other people. And, and, and we got stuck in that cave. Water had risen and we had to go underwater to get through to get through the rocks and stuff and I got scared and I nearly drowned. I swallowed some water and I kind of got myself stuck but I, I managed to survive and in the scariest moment of my life thinking I was going to die when I opened my eyes there, there was this this beautiful beautiful goddess in front of me and there was actually a person there um, who the person is today I don't know and I'm not going to look for that person but but the face I hallucinated, I kept inside of me, and my entire life, I looked for another one. It's in some of my songs also. And over time, I, I just kind of didn't really give up on looking for that face, but didn't really think it existed. And I thought I was being haunted by a ghost or something. But today, if you look at uh, at your beautiful Taylor Swift. That's the face I was looking for. And there's some age difference between the two. But nonetheless, she's real. It's real. And <laughs> and it's, it's it was amazing to me. When I when I saw her pop up on the internet and, and on the charts and stuff like that seven years ago. I was amazed by the sound at first and then a few years after that she was wearing the hair and the face exact 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 replica of what I had hallucinated and today I'm like ha oh, it exists it was to me like God was telling me we come from the cave days and once upon a time it can be very dark and survivors especially our, our lives can be and looked at as something very dark and but there's beauty in the end and I might have to wait to heaven but it, it don't matter it's the fact that God made that little miracle happen for me and how he did it well, I don't know God works in mysterious ways but to me that was that that's what has stopped me from kissing women <laughs> and, and, and I still look for that hug and I, I trade I trade it all in for one ballroom dance <laughs> one one prince and princess ballroom dance like Cinderella type um, and that's a fact so uh, I don't want to annoy them with, with that stuff but, but for the rest of the world I do want to let you know that there's light at the end of the, at the, end of the tunnels and uh, there is a heaven 
I've had a few near-death experiences, and uh, I, I've seen quite a few things. My uh, my Christian, I'm a Christian. I was born and raised a Catholic, and I had to go through all the Catholic steps and uh, all the sacraments and all, 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 all the whole thing. And then I got married once upon a time, and then I got divorced. And divorce is like it's like death. It hurts. It's it's crazy. It's crazy how divorce is is a killer for for men and women. But uh, we, we can survive from that and move on from that. I'm not the type to start jumping in the bed with someone else right away. Uh, no way. <laughs> not, not me. Uh, yeah, I'm caught in love with me. I'm not caught in love with you. I say that's no problem. <laughs> yeah, I'd do that for sure because I never really had that type of friend. But but it's not the, the, like the most the most in, important thing to do to look for. And. Uh, <coughs> If it brings hope to anybody, even to just one person, then then I guess it was worth it. Because uh, the way God brought hope to me changed my life forever. And uh, I'm not saying that you're going to find a person that's going to make you feel like that. I'm not saying you're going to fall in love again and everything will be perfect. Because life isn't perfect. And uh, what I can tell you that if you don't give up, and you talk about it, you will, you will succeed, and and you will get rid of the anger from it, like I have. Um, the anger stopped on that uh, quite a few years ago. Uh, there is no more anger in that stuff for me. Um, as for uh, the confused part, uh, still happens quite a bit, and and that's going to happen f forever because it's a it, it's a trauma and. Uh, and when you live a trauma like that, you live with post-trauma disorder, and uh, that's uncurable. Post-trauma disorder is there for life. The only thing we can do for that is positive reinforced people. Uh, we can s stop the harassment um, and the provocation. And by doing so, by doing so, we will win. And uh, by saying no to drugs, you'll avoid the chance that you can become a whore because uh, we go through that step. We were molested. Everything has an opposite. For every high, there's a down. For every down, there's a high. Let's stop that cycle by staying in the middle. Like I said, if it helps even just one person. And I didn't talk about it for nothing. Thank you, and thank God for giving me the strength to talk about <coughs> Being obnoxious and being strong about it is, is not the best way to deal with this, but uh, there, there was a question, and I want to answer to that because uh, because when you're a victim like that, your head gets, your head gets so screwed up that uh, for a while you, you hallucinate and, and you imagine, and and those those who are real victims know that that's, this has happened. Um, sometimes you'll blame, like my sister was gone ho on. I'm blaming my father for doing this and it wasn't him and you can be imprisoned for for getting it wrong um, as a victim you get a little leeway on that but but if the rumors don't stop then even my sister as a victim could end up being arrested and, and I'm using that as an example because uh, the law does state that you have to get it right and I have it right. I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars into therapy to make sure I had it right before I released anything. And I'm not sending this to her or anything like that, but I, I, I'd like to let the others know that when you hold on to it for so long and, and, and you get it confused, you, you can end up hurting more people in the process. Uh, I, I was beaten down a few times because 
because I had it wrong at first when I when when I started listening to my sister saying that it was daddy that did this and I, I couldn't believe it and today I know that it's not and the, the, the guy that had done this as to us as a child was much bigger and not as tall my, my father was taller and, and and the guy that had done this was shorter and, and, and bigger and, and so when we went inside the brain and uh, hypnotized to, to end up finding out exactly who did it, 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 it is the neighbor that did this and uh, the neighbor across the street from us back then. Um, it's very important to, to, to listen to those that are going to try to help you um, when these kinds of things are happening or have happened because uh, otherwise you can have an innocent man killed and in prison for something he did not do and and maybe that's why I'm talking about this today because I have been in prison for stuff that I did not do and and that's that that's that's wrong and the, the book of law states quite clearly that you gotta get it right it's like lying to the news it's against the law to do so you cannot file a false report you, you can go to prison up to 15 years for filing a false report. So, so when you do come out of your shell and tell the world or tell the people, if you're not quite sure exactly who did it, go through the steps. We'll find you a proper doctor to, to help you with that. And, and the proper steps are there in order for you to get it right. And I'm talking about this because it's very important. Like I said, I was beaten down for, for getting it wrong. And then later on, I was beaten down because my uncle had done the bobo to his sister. So, so it was like a vicious, a vicious thing going through my head. And that's the vicious cycle we had to stop. And, and one of these days, <laughs> the entire book will, will be up. And, and hopefully it's the one that I write because... Uh, like I said, hundreds of thousands of dollars I went into this therapy and into in, into finding out whom is guilty and all that stuff because I had lost my memory. They thought maybe that I was the one that, that didn't remember properly. But uh, I, I do remember properly and um, <laughs> and better than anybody around me because uh, they, they thought I could do the same. It, it doesn't happen like that. Victims don't 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 do what people have done to them and, and that's another fact in a book of psychology we are afraid of it it comes out we speak out we, we get mad about it victims might end up killing people but victims will not <coughs> <coughs> victims will not go out and do the same to to another person I, I am a victim I am a survivor from it, and, and, and never would I, would I install that crap onto someone else behind me or someone else in front of me. What we tend to do is either shut up, revert, and stop talking about it, and then become like zombies, or we go hide behind drugs and alcohol. And uh, it took a while to stop drinking and stuff like that, but. Uh, the truth is out and and get it right and we will help and if you don't have it right we will help we will try to help until you do have it right so so when you look at my biography and and, and, and this interview here you some names were mentioned and uh, some characters were mentioned and uh, I got it right okay and uh, I'm not saying that to defend myself I'm saying that because I know it happened to my sister also. She was with me when this happened as a child. And after that, I don't know where my sister went with her life. Uh, I do know that she got married and, and became someone. Someone. She became someone. She was doing something with her life. And that's that's two thumbs up for, for that. But I do remember her getting it wrong and being mad at my father as long as I had been mad at my father. But the reason she's mad at the father is because we blame him for leaving us there. We blame our father for for not trying to take us out of there 
and maybe raise us on on his own or something. Like that. And uh, I, I do a great job raising my kids. I have done a great job raising my kids. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, they're all going to become something, someone, and uh, um, they won't be mentioned that much throughout my career because uh, it's trying to keep them safe and trying to keep them away from that vicious cycle. But uh, nonetheless, there are ways to succeed, and the first way to succeed is, is to reach out your hand and tell someone. Well, this is still my best friend. Yeah. This is still the hardest thing to talk about. After everything, everything throughout my life, even here, I'm by myself right now with these cameras, and. Uh, I can hear some neighbors and I can hear some people outside yelling stuff because uh, there's a direct line. Um, but uh, nonetheless, <coughs> even in India, rubber handles can bangers. time that the law starts to put these people behind bars. Over enough. 